Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to Tor. So Tor is a service that you use to try to provide anonymity while you are on the internet. So if you're trying to go around, you're quite trying to, to surf on the internet, do things on the internet, and you don't want people to be able to track back and figure out where you are coming from, Tor is a service that will allow you to do this. Also, one of the big topics of conversation in my fan base has been something called the Deep Web or Dark Net. Tor is a service that helps create what is called the dark net, basically internet networks that you can only access if you have special software installed on your computer. So not only does Tor allow you to anonymously surf the internet, but it allows you to also anonymously host websites. So if you want to create a new website for some political dissident organization, something like that, normally you have to go out, you have to register a domain name, you have to buy a hosting account, and so if you're in a country that's trying to crack down on things like that, they can easily, 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 easily track you back uh, to, to wherever you are. Well, with something called hidden services within Tor, you can actually host websites, and just as people's anonymity is kept for navigating through the web, this is also true for you uh, when you are hosting the server, nobody knows who you are or where that server resides. So Tor was originally created uh, a number of years ago by the U U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. So one of the ideas that they were having, one of the things that they were trying to figure out was how to secure the transport uh, of information between two locations. So especially when they have soldiers or naval people out in the field, the question was how on open internet connections could you communicate back with, with the home office uh, without the information either being captured or something called traffic analysis being done. And so they came up with Tor. So basically, when you connect to the Tor system using your computer, your, the traffic on the Tor system is encrypted and when you connect out to a server in the outside world, that server will not know where you are coming from. So if you're trying to hide your location, uh, it's relatively easy. Now basically how Tor allows this to happen is it is essentially a mesh of proxy servers, secure proxy servers. So we've we had a class on proxy servers before. Basically with a proxy server, you connect your computer to the proxy server, and then from the proxy server, you go out to the internet. So let's say you're trying to bypass some kind of firewall in your college's uh, network. Basically you connect to a proxy server, and then all of your information is relayed through that proxy server out to the internet, so you can get to your, your BitTorrent or your porn or whatever it is you're trying to get to. Well, the idea with Tor is that it's a mesh of these proxy servers. So instead of just going through one proxy server, you may go through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten proxy servers. So let's go over to the computer just for one second, over to my little digital whiteboard so you can kind of understand uh, what we're talking about here. So in order to keep your security, the, the, the main issue uh, that, that Tor is trying to deal with is if, if you're sitting at your computer here and you're trying to get to a server out here, let's say www www.cnn.com, right? What's going to happen is you're going to connect to the internet and then from there you're going to go to the server cnn.com and basically your external IP address, let's say 208.55.66.1, when you connect to cnn.com, cnn.com is going to be able to see what your external IP address is. Now we've talked about geolocation before with IP addresses and once somebody knows what your IP address is, it's very easy. To, to locate where you are you're physically at. So the issue is, is not only can CNN.com know what your external IP address is, but if somebody like the NSA or some kind of intelligence agency is listening on the traffic, they also know where you're coming from. So the idea with Tor is instead of going just through the open internet to CNN.com, what happens is you go into the Tor network.
So the Tor has numerous relays. So when you install Tor on your computer, not only can you use the Tor network, but you can set up a relay. A relay is basically like a proxy. So what happens is if you're trying to get to CNN.com, your connection goes to one Tor relay, and then it goes to another Tor relay, and then it goes to another Tor relay, and then it goes to another Tor relay, and then it goes out to CNN.com. I'm not sure exactly how many relays it goes through, but it goes through a number. The important thing with this is then CNN.com, you know, your address is 208.55.66.1. CNN.com does not see your external IP address. It sees the external IP address of whatever the last relay is. So, uh, let's say 201.77.22.6. So basically this tries to hide what your external IP address is. So either, either the company can't go back and figure out who you are, or again, NSA or any of these intelligence agencies can't do that. That's essentially the idea of what's going on with Tor, is it's a mesh of these, these proxy servers to try to protect your communication um, while it's in route. So with this, the one thing that you have to understand is while while your traffic is within that Tor network, that Tor mesh, it is encrypted. But do be careful, we will have a class on security and safety concerns with Tor. Your traffic is not encrypted between you and the first relay you go to, and it's not encrypted between the final relay, that you, the exit relay that you're coming out of, and the website or the service that you're going to. So this is one thing that you have to be careful with Tor. While it is in the network, uh, it is encrypted, but otherwise it's not. Now one of the questions you may have is, well, what about these individual relays? Can they try to, to track information and try to locate people within the network? And the interesting thing with Tor is that each relay relay only has information about the relays it's connected to. So let's say you go through five relays in order to get out to CNN.com. Each relay in there, it knows the upstream relay and it knows the downstream relay, but it doesn't know anything beyond that. So that is one of the ways that they keep anonymity is that the, the relays only know the other relays that they are directly connected to. They don't know how traffic is being routed in the overall network. Now with Tor, basically in order to keep this secure, is, is each route through the rate relays is stable for approximately 10 minutes. So basically when your computer connects into to the Tor network, it creates a route for you through these Tor relays, and you will keep that same route for approximately 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, it will drop, and then uh, you will go, they will give you a different route. Again, this is a way uh, in order to, to keep security on the network. Now, when we talk about the dark net, or when some people talk about the deep web, what we're talking about is something called uh, hidden services within Tor. So there are what are called dot onion sites, right? And these are basically websites that are hosted within Tor itself. So you can't do www.somethingorother.onion and go there. Basically, you have to have Tor installed on your computer, you have to have Tor running, and then you can go to what are called hidden services. Now with these hidden services, they have obnoxiously horrible um, domain names. They are definitely not what you would consider um, human readable. Essentially, whenever you uh, initialize a hidden service uh, on the Tor network, what happens is they give you a random uh, string of digits and letters dot onion. So whenever you're looking at the, these, these deep web or these Tor sites, these hidden services sites, they will have really, 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 really obnoxious uh, names on them. And that's just one of the things that you should consider. So when, when you're talking about these dark net sites or these dot onion sites, these hidden services, all this is, is these are websites that are hosted on the Tor network. Again, the reason why that's so important is now whenever you bring up a web server and you put it on the Tor network, nobody can know who it is that's actually brought up the server. So you could bring this up in the middle of Egypt and have it talking about the political party, and you will also keep the anonymity 
for that web server. So that's what the hidden services are. So let's go over to the other computer for a second, just so I can show you uh, the Tor website, and you can kind of get an idea of how you would go about using Tor uh, in the real world. So if you want to start using Tor, all you're going to have to do is go to torproject.org, and all the information and the downloads and everything are here. Now when we go down, Tor has a number of different products that you can use and you should take a, take a look at all of them. So the main thing is that there is Tor itself. So if we click on Tor and the, the download button, this is where you can download and install Tor onto your computer. So this is where you actually install it onto your computer. Now the one thing they're going to give you is they're going to give you a lot of warnings. Now it's important that you understand is Tor is one specific tool that is used to, to protect your privacy. But, you know, with nefarious players out there on the internet, there are ways to bypass everything, right? So they're going to tell you, they're going to give you some warnings here. Now, some of the warnings that they give you is they ask you to use the Tor browser. I'll show you that in a second. So there's a special uh, derivative of Firefox called the Tor browser that will try to uh, keep your, your privacy for you. Then it also tells you don't enable or install browser plugins. So this is very important is because when you're on the, 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 the internet, basically with Tor, it's trying to, it's, it's going for your web browser, it's going to protect your, your, your privacy. It's going to try to protect your privacy. But within your web browser, remember, there's a lot of other programs that are running, QuickTime, Flash, things like that. Tor doesn't necessarily keep those individual plugins from giving away uh, your, your, your private information. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, use HTTPS versions of websites. So basically, this is website encryption. Remember, as I told you, uh, the egg. The, inf the, uh, the information is not encrypted between the exit relay and whatever website you're going to. So if NSA was going to try to grab your information, they could try to grab it between the exit relay and whatever site you're going to. If you use HTTPS or if you use encryption, that's one way to try to, to stop that. Don't open documents downloaded through Tor while online. Uh, I've shown you tricks using things like iframes, where if you open up a uh, document with things like iframes or other stuff, it will try to grab your information and send it, and then use bridges or find a company. We'll talk about that stuff later. So this is some information that you should keep in mind when you're going to be using Tor. Tor, again, with all security things, we've got to be thinking about this. This is a specific product, this is a specific service to protect you in one way, but don't assume it will, will, will completely protect you from everything. So you can either download Tor, or you can go, and here they have something called Tails. So Tails is a live operating system also built to hide, uh, to, to maintain your privacy and anonymity. So this is something that you might want to use. Like if you're, if you're worried, you're like, oh no, Eli, I'm not sure if I'm going to configure my computer properly and if somebody's going to know who I am. Well, then you can just download and use Tails. Again, this is a live operating system, which means you can boot it straight off a USB or a DVD and just run it from there. So it's been configured theoretically properly. And then there's also something called the Tor browser. So if you want to just start to play around, uh, you know, navigating the darkness, but you don't want to actually install Tor and go through all of that. You can download the Tor browser bundle. So this is simply you download this and you just double click on the executable and the Tor browser will run. Once the Tor browser is running, then within the Tor browser, the Tor browser itself connects to the Tor network, and then you can navigate to CNN.com or whatever and keep your anonymity that way. Also, if you want to play around and look at the dark, uh, the dark net or the deep web, and you don't want to install Tor, you can use this this Tor browser to be able to navigate. Now, I've downloaded and uh, I've set up the Tor browser. So if we go over here we can see that I have the Tor browser already open. So this isn't this isn't the full fledged Tor. This is just the Tor browser. And up here, I just wanted to show you this is what one of those hidden services or dark net sites, what the the quote unquote what you would call the domain name looks like. Is this just this horribly obnoxious uh, whatever that is dot onion. So just realize, like I say, surfing surfing around the dark net. It's not like we sell illegal weapons dot onion. It's whatever this garbage is. But this is what would be called uh, a website on the dark net. 
a it's a tour hidden service and from here you can go and you can do gambling and business and all the other kinds of stuff so this is basically just an introduction to tour so that you guys understand what's going on really all tour is is a mesh a mesh of proxy servers that encrypt your traffic while you are within the mesh. Now, one of the things that I will tell you is I have been playing around with Tor and doing all this stuff, and um, I find it to be absolutely obnoxious to use for the reasons I explained in the introduction to proxy class, or the proxies for hack, whatever. I, I did a proxy class before. And remember, one of the issues that you deal with when you're dealing with proxy servers is not only do you have your internet speed to worry about. So you have a certain upload speed and you have a certain download speed. So I have 35 megabits per second up and 35 megabits per second down. Remember, when you're hopping through that mesh of proxies, you get slowed down by everybody else's internet connection. So you may have 35 megabits per second up and down, but the first relay may only have one megabit per second up and down. And the next relay might only have 756 up and down. And then the next relay may not may have a different speed. And so basically your speed is going to be whatever the, the slowest link is, and then make it quite a bit slower than that. So when you're trying to use Tor to navigate around on the internet, I uh, again, if you if you are trying to preserve your privacy, if there is a reason that you're trying to do secretive stuff, hey, spaghetti monster bless, go for it. Uh, for me, the average Joe, um, the NSA can figure out where I'm going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like to, to balance through this network, just I have found um, to be a bit agonizingly slow but there you go. We are going to have a class on using these different products and installing and setting up uh, Tor and Tor Relays, but just for this introduction class, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview so that you understood what is going on in, in relatively simplistic terms. Again, in the modern era, whether or not you should trust Tor I'm not going to say I know a lot of people do uh, trust Tor. So that's, that's all fine for them. One of the things that I will warn you about with these hidden services, these dark net websites, is remember the laws of your country are still valid even when you are on the dark net. One of the problems that I see with the dark net websites is people set up things like child porn, people, people set up you know shops selling drugs, people set, set up a lot of, of bad stuff on the quote unquote dark net. And remember, if you go to the wrong site, your web browser caches those pictures that you see on the wrong site and the police come knocking on the door, remember, you will then in fact be in possession of child pornography possibly and you are going to suffer the jail time for that. So that is one of the things that I will warn you about the Darknet websites, the, the hidden services, is that the law does not stop once you start using Tor. If somebody figures out what you're doing, you can have all bunches of problems. So, so just be careful there. Not only that, but people set up some really nasty stuff on the dark net. And so it's, it's not necessarily something you just want to be navigating through, you know, all willy nilly. Just be careful. So, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This class was Introduction to Tor. Again, we are going to have more classes on Tor. This is just an overview and an introduction. As always, I enjoyed teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.